Some good things are going on with the Planetside 2 team at Daybreak at the moment. They're actually taking on some more staff, which could show us that they're doing a little bit better since that update that they put out for the construction system. And, well, hype stations are go. But they just had a live stream a few hours ago now, and because I've got some burning content I want to put up tomorrow that I've been putting off forever, I thought let's just chuck it together tonight. It's, it's like half twelve in, in the morning and it, this is ad hoc. I'm going completely off the rails. But what I really wanted to do, because I think it's interesting, is to get gauge the feedback and how people feel about some of their ideas. Basically they announced a lot of new changes to the game and they wanted some feedback on their end and I thought hey maybe I'll throw it out to my subscribers and see what they think as well and I'll just go over the changes if you haven't watched the live stream and try and condense it to about five, six, seven minutes that sort of range rather than 50 on the live stream. So the big big one in my opinion even though there's quite a few big changes is the change to make the service global and I'll say this is completely they're putting out the net and seeing whether people want to want it or not but what they are thinking of doing is making that so there isn't technically any limit for characters to go across servers I think there'll still be the servers will be Miller, Cobalt, Emerald etc, Connery um, and Briggs but there won't be the current system where you have to log into that server You'll, it'll be like an instance MMO where the, there's actually one mega server, but there's those little servers of instances where you can go to. The way I see it is that there's two camps at the moment and two sides to the argument. So there's the naysayers, which believe that the most populated server will keep getting the players and the other servers won't get uh, looking and people won't do the objectives on other servers. So taking bases that are hard, if they're finding it particularly hard to take a base, they'll just move on and go to a different server and try to get find another fight. And sometimes you have to push through the bases to have the flow of battle and to open up the map on servers. There's also the idea that there's quite close-knit communities on each of the servers. So for example on Miller there's quite a lot of outfits that have existed there for years. I mean half of us are Woodburnites that were forced in with a server smash that we shouldn't really have lost. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But we have seen this sort of mashing of communities together before and it isn't exactly catastrophic but in this occasion it's completely dragging everyone apart and they're saying that there'd be a pool of outfits across all the servers so technically somebody from Cobalt now could join a Miller outfit or, or even an Emerald outfit or even a Briggs outfit we could just jump in with the Australians um, and then coming into the good side I think that a lot of people that haven't had the chance to play together because you, you do make friends on Reddit, you have real life friends that might have hopped into the game that are playing on a different server and being able to play that with them would be good and especially on your leveled up characters and I think with a lot of the construction stuff for example being Empire specific it means that there'll be more of an incentive to buy items or not that there's an incentive but it's more worthwhile to buy an item because it's going to be completely server-wide now because if you buy a TR item you can play it on any of the servers you can play it with anybody but now you're sort of restricted and you're sort of stuck on one server because of you but purchasing all these items or whatever also although there is the idea that people will move to the most populated servers I kind of already do that myself anyway uh, late at night when the European servers start dying I hop over to Emerald and play over there on the American servers because at the moment, if it does die, then it gets boring and the states, the fights get quite stale. So if there's one populated server, it doesn't necessarily mean that the other servers are destroyed. It's just that there'll be a shift in population at certain times, perhaps. The problem with this is that they can't really try it out and test it. If it happens, it probably has to stay happening forever because people are going to start buying things, thinking that they're, they're character wide. And then there's probably not really any going back from that point. Personally, I'm really on the fence at the moment. I don't know how it would work out. My gut tells me just merge the servers, people will keep their communities on their own servers and maybe there will be some teething problems with people moving out when the servers aren't populated but then again having a mega populated server is always going to be the most fun and have the most epic experience of Planetside 2 you can have. Although one of the big facets of the game is that it is an MMO and that we do have outfits and communities that are playing there and not just in like 
games like CS:GO where they're clans and they're, it, the meta's outside of the game. The meta's inside of the, inside of the game. It's part of the outfits that are playing live without any sort of prior competition or organization. So the next big thing on my list is the vehicle hacking. So they say that it's in the very early stages and it's gonna need a tool which will replace something in your slots, although they didn't specify this. Um, I'm all for vehicle hacking, I think it'll be fun, and I think like in Planets Like One, it wasn't the be all and end all. It, the, what they did, I think, at the time was have sort of a particle effect that showed you off to everybody whilst you're hacking a vehicle. And they're saying it's going to take as long as hacking a terminal, which is quite a long time to expose yourself when you're near a tank, especially things like the Spitfire turrets or anybody, any infantry around are probably going to notice you trying to hack that vehicle. So I think it's going to be a niche thing and it's just going to be fun. I think it's going to be a fun addition. And I think the big concern at the moment is that Sunderers really need to not be hackable when they're deployed because if they're deployed, they're already quite easy to take out with mines and C4, and that's really annoying. So they talked about a lot of new additions to the construction system. They've already shown the blast wall and a few things. They're talking about a ramp, which could just be funny. Um, the big ones are the vehicle spawner, which would be a big asset to the defenders, because at the moment, if there's armor from the enemy side, it's almost impossible to defend, defend your base if you're getting completely zerged with armor. Um, and also what they're doing at the moment is a first step towards having some sort of spawning uh, construction item in the bases. So at the moment they're going to have reinforcements listed, like you see the reinforcements on the side. It sort of emphasizes going to these player made bases. I think that it meant that you could spawn on the module, which would be the reinforcement module. But either way, the spawn tune would be an item that would be added to the game, and that would be interesting to see. Another thing they're going to add is artillery, and this could be rather funny. The artillery is going to have quite a distance on it. It's firing 500 meters, and whilst it's charging up, which you'll have to do by adding Cortium to the base, it will be highlighted on the map so everyone can see that you're trying to charge your artillery up and up. And I think, at the end of the day, it's annoying to die from something that you can't see and you can't deal with, but the idea that it's going to be marked on the map and going to be a new objective is going to be the thing that's sort of the linchpin as to why it's going to be useful. It, it's just going to be fun, I think. It's going to be a new objective and destroying that module before it fires off an artillery to obliterate a base or, or anywhere really would be rather fun. And I think they said it'd have a similar effect to the explosion of the core and that sort of devastation. They're also talking about adding an ion cannon module, which will be used to attack the sky shields, which currently can make bases almost impossible to attack if they're built in ridges or little hills and they're built inside of that. So that might be one way of breaching the defenses as uh, attackers without having to sort of spam loads and loads of infantry. They're also adding guard towers and things like that. But basically what they want to do is make it so that the bases are defended for longer and they're less of a fixture for 40 to 40 minutes to an hour, which they currently are. They're sort of a very quick turnaround time on bases to, as to when they're deployed and when they're destroyed. And for saying how long they take to make, it, it is quite disappointing. But at the same time, I wouldn't want player bases like in a game like Rust or something like that it does need to be something that's realistically siegeable and keeps the flow of the battle going. But it'll be interesting to see how it works in the game and once it comes live, it can probably be tweaked from there. And I don't think it's gonna to be too damaging in that everybody will leave. I think it'll be fun no matter how it's sort of pushed out in the next stage and then it can be tweaked in the next stage. They're also gonna add a new armor system, which basically mean people can submit their own armors and people like Faven and others can submit some pretty epic stuff on the player studio. Basically at the moment it's just layered up onto the model and they weren't really accepting anything to be submitted even though they were being designed. But now there'll be separate parts to the armor, so shoulder pads, body pads, legs, things like that. And even backpacks they were saying, and I think that although the mass majority of players probably won't be bothered, I think it's just gonna add a new way for them to make money without impacting on the game in the gameplay manner and keeping it free to, free to play basically. And to be honest, if I had some money, I would probably invest in some of these cool cosmetics because making your character look good is pretty damn cool in games. And I've been playing Overwatch a lot and grinding out skins. It's, just, it's quite silly, but people do like to look good in games. There's a lot of vanity. 
the one thing that I would say is there needs to be a way to look at your character m more in depth in the game. I mean, the scrolly thing on the menu is quite ugly, to be honest. It'd be really nice if there was a mirror in the walk gate. That would be something that would be good. <laughs> or perhaps just when you're AFK for the camera to spin around you on the, and I give you a front view. That would be, you know, that'd be nice. Rusty Ben Glaive is being called Johari Cave and they won the GTX 980 I believe or 980 Ti, I'm not sure. I, I pronounced it wrong on my other video. I said it was a 1080 when it wasn't. Silly me. Um, but I think Atlas is probably going to be very upset that the Vanu Lubrication Depot isn't in. And to be honest, that is a good name. Uh, some sort of lubrication de depot in there does need to see the light of day. <laughs> and another big announcement about the implants is they're going to get rid of the energy. It's always been a big little thing that just gets at you, the implant system. It was always that thing that was slightly pay to win. And it was so random and didn't really make any sense. It just seemed very, just not not in the right place. And they, the dev developers knew that and they've said on many occasions that they didn't even really want to put it in at that point. And in some ways, I wish they would just get rid of any monetization, completely cut everything, get rid of the levels, just, just cut everything back to the bare bones and have max ranks of each of the implants. As it is interesting to have implants in the game and to have that variation, but it's not interesting to have the levels be bought or buy loads of implants and put them into the, the, the coagulator. It's just a bit rubbish. Um, it'd be nice maybe to have them as cert lines and just to refund everybody that's put money into the energy components, but we'll just have to see where that goes. Either way, with extra staff, especially on the art side, it might be that we see some sort of revamp to the game or maybe new designs or new things coming into the game, which is very promising. Anyway, what does everyone else think? That's sort of why I'm engaging in this video. Just put, your, put them in the comments below and I'll probably put some polls up throughout the video. Um, polls have been very useful and I need to, I need to release publicly all the polls I've done. Hundreds of people are actually participating in them. That's why I keep putting in my videos. They're actually quite successful. Um, but yeah, what does everyone else think about the changes? Thanks for watching everybody. I'm gonna have an Overwatch video out tomorrow that is gonna be serious business. It might be rubbish, but you'll be able to be there to see me fail if it is. Um, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you thought it was smelly, or I don't know, I can't think of anything now, it's like 1am, then dislike it. Um, you can always subscribe to me. Until next time, everybody, Joshino. Also, what else do I want to say? <laughs>